Hi, this is Holly of Holly Soap Making. In this video, I'll show you how I made a pink clay soap scented with my favorite grapefruit blend of essential oils. I used a much steeper water discount than I normally do, so I'll go into that a bit as well. If you're interested in the recipe I used, be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I enter it into soap calc. All the other details and links will be listed in the description box below. If you're a beginner or new to soap making, please check out the safety section below for links on lye safety and beginner soap making. And remember that sodium hydroxide or lye can cause chemical burns to your skin and damage your eyes. So be sure to follow lye safe handling procedures during the entire soap making process, even while cleaning up. I prepared some pink kale in clay by hydrating it in a small amount of distilled water. I usually hydrate clay so they blend in easier later and I don't end up with too many specks of clay in the finished soap. However, if you'd rather skip this step, you can add the dry clay directly to the melted oils or into the soap after you've added the lye. As I mentioned in the beginning, I did use a steep water discount when making the lye for this soap. I did this primarily so the soap would set up quicker, but also to reduce the chances of ash forming and so the bars would contain less water that needed to evaporate during the curing process. A stronger lye concentration can get hotter and emit a lot of fumes, so for this batch I used ice made with distilled water. It wasn't completely frozen, but it was close enough to help keep the temperature down and the fumes at a minimum. There can be downsides to steep water discounts, like seizing with certain fragrances, or depending on your recipe, the soap could trace too fast for complicated swirls. It's also harder for the soap to reach gel phase when using a water discount, so just keep all of this in mind. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend getting comfortable with less steep water discounts before trying this one. When making your lye, always remember to work in a well-ventilated area away from children and pets. Once I was sure the sodium hydroxide was completely dissolved, I sat the lye aside to cool and prepared the oils. I'm not showing the oil preparation here, but the recipe is listed at the end of the video. I added the pink clay, one half teaspoon at a time, until I was happy with the color. The usage rate ended up being about one quarter teaspoon per cup of soap. Due to the color of the essential oils, the final soap ends up more of a peachy pink color, which I thought went with a grapefruit scent really well.
As usual, I oven processed the soap to make sure it went through gel phase so the color would be more vibrant. I was worried about the tall round mold tipping over, so I just secured it in a slap mold before placing it in the oven. I removed the soap the next morning and immediately unmolded, cut, and stamped it. This soap was a cold process soap, so I made sure the top of lye was set to sodium hydroxide or NaOH. My recipe oil weight was 2,000 grams. That included 1,100 grams for the loaf mold, plus 900 grams for the cylindrical mold. My lye concentration was 40%, which means my lye solution consisted of 40% sodium hydroxide and 60% water. As I mentioned earlier, this is a steep water discount, so only try this if you're already comfortable making soap and understand the pros and cons of water discounts. If you'd rather not use such a steep discount, try a 33% lye concentration instead. I left the super fat at 5% and my fragrance usage rate was 45 grams per kilogram. Once you have everything entered, you just select to calculate the recipe, then to view or print it. Soap Calc will give you a really nice listing of your ingredients, including the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making.